Hello and welcome back to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction, and this is the series Meeting Under the Stars, and we're now on chapter 19, so make sure you smash that like button, comment down below what you think of this chapter and what's going to happen next, and subscribe if you haven't already, you got to chapter 19, seriously, what are you waiting for, okay? So I hope you enjoy Meeting Under the Stars. Chapter 19. Marinette's POV. Tiki, I can't believe that Alia is one of the judges of this contest. And from the looks of it, she's the one running things. Marinette fumed in the safety of her room, pulling out the special paper she'd used for making her patterns. And I've never seen Mr. Buford just dismissed like that. She has to be up to something and that other man, he gave me the creeps. I agree, Marinette. She's always far too calculating. You need to watch yourself around her. Her little friend filtered about the other Kwamis, helping to lay out the other supplies she was going to need. I didn't like her tone. She used to always have a plan, and I don't trust she doesn't have one now. What she said? Yeah, and that mention of me not being the leader I once was, or the crack about my spotty past? She froze as her mind processed the potential significance of those words. Tiki, you don't think she could know a um, ladybug, do you? Tiki perched on the pincushion, tiny brow furrowed. I don't see how, Marinette. You've always been very careful, but I know you've never trusted Lila. You need to trust your gut around her. You haven't seen her in a while, so she might be referring to your high school days. How everyone looked up to you as a leader and a friend. But a spotty past? Unless she still insists all those lies she talked about were true. She paused and gazed at Tiki, hoping she would give her the answers. Knowing with Lila, she didn't think as clearly as she should. I don't know what else that could mean. What are you going to tell Adrian? I need to tell him that Lila has resurfaced, but this is when it gets complicated, doesn't it? He will understand how Marinette feels about Lila, but as Ladybug, she wouldn't know if there was an issue yet. If Shat tells Ladybug... Oh, Tiki, I think I need to keep it simple. He'll understand how Marinette at least feels about her and why I'm on edge. I mean, it wasn't just me, was it? How she was around him at school? Her little friend bristled. I do. I also remembered she threatened you and most of your classmates were nearly accumulated because of her lies. Well... I'm not a scared 14-year-old anymore. I'm Marinette Dupin-Chan, and I'm Ladybug, and I can deal with the likes of her. Besides, she said, her voice softening, Adrian loves me. I can get through anything with him as my kitty by my side. But, Marinette, if she knows you're Ladybug, then you should warn him. That way he can look out for you as Shat too. But how can I do that without letting him know that I'm Ladybug? She asked carefully, measuring out the curves into a thin paper. No, Tiki, I'll just have to have my guard up, and I always have you to help me. Her Tiki flew up and nuzzled her face. Always. Letting go of the breath she'd been holding, Marinette focused on turning her drawing into the flat pattern pieces, losing herself in the mechanics of fashion design. It wasn't until a few hours later that her phone buzzed. Adrian, I'm on tenterhooks. What happened? Oh, blast! I forgot to text Adrian. Marinette muttered, furiously typing. Marinette, sorry, a lot going on. Yeah, I'm one of the top three. Adrian, I knew you could do it, princess. Adrian, how would you like to celebrate? Marinette, anything's okay as long as I'm with you. She paused for a moment then added, Marinette, 
Maybe somewhere we can talk? Just the two of us? She watched the lips bubble flicker for a few moments then. Adrian. As my princess wishes. Leave it with me. I'll pick you up at seven. An enormous grin formed across her lips. Oh, how she loved him. How she saw more of her kitty and Adrian every single day. How she couldn't imagine Sha being any other than Adrian. How she was already getting used to falling asleep in his arms and never wanting it to stop. Marinette, sounds good. See you then. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Adrian, I'm so proud of you, my love. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Just reading over his words filled her heart with warmth. Clutching her phone to her chest, she spun her desk chair around in giddy circles. It didn't seem real. It felt like this was all just a pleasant dream she would wake up from all too soon, with her being back in her 14-year-old self, pining for a boy who would never see her more than a friend. No, this isn't a dream, she declared. Just the fact that Lila showed up today proves that. Adrian is my kitty, and he loves me without the mask. We will make this work, and once we defeat Hot Moth and Phoenix and Bear, I will tell him everything, and there won't be secrets between us anymore. I know you'll do it, Marinette, Peaky said proudly. You have come so far since you were first became Ladybug. I truly believe you and Cher can make it through anything. Thank you, Tiki. She gathered her little friend into her hands and placed a tiny kiss atop her head. Just then her stomach grumbled, reminding her of the single pastry she had eaten for breakfast. She and Tiki giggled. Right, lunch first and then back to work. Glancing at her phone, she saw that she still had several hours before she had to get ready for a date. A realisation hit her. This would be their first official date since Halloween and figuring it out. They had talked about it, but with the presentation, they, she, had put it off. Instead, they'd fallen into the comfortable side of being a couple who were already friends. Wow. Okay. Her first official date with the man of her dreams. Her 14-year-old Marinette inside her squealed in delight at the very thought. Marinette was ready and waiting for Adrian a few minutes before seven. Despite having her head in pattern design mode, she managed to clear her mind long enough to pick out an outfit for the date. Not knowing what he had planned, she went with a warm cranberry wool dress with pewter buttons down the front, a loose grey scarf that matched her tights and comfy black ankle boots. She was just adding some dark lipstick when she heard a familiar but unexpected tapping at a skylight. She scurried up to her bed and peeked out at him, he was Cher again, in front of Marinette for the first time since she had figured him out. She had seen him as Ladybug once or twice, fighting villains, but he wasn't the same. A wave of emotions hit her, realising how much she had missed seeing the Cher at her window, but also the fact that she could see Adrian behind the mask, now more than ever. It really had been just him all along. That the two men she loved were one and the same. She didn't even think Ladybug was that lucky. She couldn't help the smirk that played across her face. And here I was expecting a prince at my door and not a tomcat at my skylight. He leaned through the opening. <laughs> but one kiss from my princess can change me back. True love's kiss is powerful after all. She stood to reach him through the gap and kissed him. Oh, she would never tire of this. You know I love you, with or without the mask, right? She breathed as she pulled away. If I didn't before, I do now, my love, he said, a wide grin lighting up his face. Sha made a shooing motion and she backed up. He rolled through the skylight and landed kneeling on her bed, holding out a pink rose. She blushed and took it with a giggle. A rose? For me? You've never brought me flowers like this before, she said, picking her words carefully. 
He took her in his arms and with a look that could melt glaciers. It reminded me of the blush in your cheeks, he whispered, brushing a finger across the side of her face, continuing into her hair as he pulled her in for a kiss. His skin was cool from the night air, but his lips were warm, and the spicy scent of his aftershave just added to the fire he lit inside her heart. When he pulled away, she pouted a bit, and he chuckled. Pressing his forehead to hers, he sighed in contentment. Did I ever tell you how wonderful it was to hear how long you've loved me? I tried. How much I wanted to tell you, but... I know, I didn't make it easy for you, for us, Chat murmured, running a claw glove through her loose hair. I'm sorry. I was afraid. After we started meeting under the stars, I realized what you meant to me, that I wanted more than we had. Before I was a blind fool, but after? I didn't think you... He tipped her chin up and gazed at her, with such love that a lump rose in her throat. I don't deserve to be this happy. She frowned, shifting her hands from his chest and grasped his wrist lightly. Adrian, you deserve everything good in the world. I'm just lucky that you want me to be part of your happiness. He drew her closer and kissed her with such a passion that she was left in no doubt of how much he wanted her in his life. His smile was full as it broke apart, panting. Well, princess, as nice as this is, I have planned a very nice celebration for you tonight, and I would hate for it to go to waste. Do I need to bring anything? Nope. Just remember your coat this time. Marinette chuckled as she climbed down the steps and placed a flower in a vase of water by a vanity and grabbed her rose fleece, coat and white gloves. Ready to go. Are you coming down? Chat shook his head, gesturing her back up onto the bed with a finger. He then led her up to the balcony into the starry November night. He turned to her and held out his hand. Come with me. She gave him a sceptical look. Where are we going, Kitty? His smirk widened. You'll see. Close your eyes and hang on tight, all right? Scooping her up in his arms... She draped her arm around his neck before launching off across the rooftops. After a few quick minutes, they landed somewhere. Give me a minute. He set her down and stepped away for a moment. Why did this feel so familiar? She could see orange and yellow lights appear from behind her closed eyes. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Her eyes fluttered open and she knew what he was trying to do. Adrian had recreated the surprise he had planned for Ladybug so many years ago that he had taken her to as Marinette, thinking Ladybug had stood him up that night. The same rooftop, the same candles, even the pillows, roses on the railings and even rose petals scattered around the space. Oh my, she whispered, her heart pounding. This could technically have been considered their first date together but they were two lonely teenagers seeking comfort for hearts that felt broken that he was recreating it so special wait did that mean he knew or guessed that she was ladybug no surely not adrian was just a romantic at heart and That meant he paid attention to details. Her roses, Marinette's roses, were pink, not the red that he'd always presented to Ladybug. Well, he asked, wrapping his arms around her. It's beautiful, but why recreate this? She gestured to the romantic setting with one hand. Because I wanted to celebrate you and what you mean to me. That night... This place was the first glimpse I had of the girl who would become my marinette. I know I already called you princess at that point as a tease, but that was the first time I really thought of you as one. She could see the blush darkening his cheeks under his mask, and she blushed as well when his voice grew husky. This is a new chapter for us, and what better than 
creating new memories here with you, just for you. Sha pulled her in into a hug and the sound of his pounding heart was like an echo of her own. They stood that way for a long moment, just reveling in being with each other. Then he took her hand and led her to a little nest of blankets and pillows that he had made amongst the candles. Once she was settled, he pulled a picnic basket from somewhere and soon they were enjoying warm handmade pies and hot chocolate. So, I want to know every detail about how it went today. Leave nothing out. She chuckled. You're as bad as Alia. He cocked his hip to one side, leaned forward and glared at her piercing over a pair of imaginary glasses and a confident wiggle of the head. Girl! He drawled in a fair imitation of a friend. You owe me all the deets now. Marinette nearly choked on her sip of hot chocolate as she burst out laughing. Okay, I was wrong. Now you're as bad as Alia. I never knew you could imitate her so well. I'll have to do all our old casts for you sometime, though I may be rusty on with most of them. He shot a devious look out the corner of his eye. But I've been told my Nino is perfect. She laughed again, flicking a pastry crumb at him. If you start breaking out those puns again, you won't get any news out of me, cat boy. He set his cup down and perched before her with a look that set her heart pounding. He leaned in, but instead of kissing her lips like she expected, he planted a kiss right below her ear before whispering, in case you haven't noticed, princess, I'm not a boy anymore. She swallowed hard and felt her cheeks burn so hot she was surprised steam wasn't escaping from them into the chill air night. Feeling his breath on her skin, her mind went deliciously blank. This might be Adrian, but he was also her kitty and she knew how to deal with him in his teasing moods. Marinette grabbed him by the bell and pulled him close until they were nose to nose. Oh, believe me, she all but purred. I've noticed. She gave him a fiery kiss of her own but kept it painfully shut, then let him go with a teasing smirk of her own. The blush that peeked out from under his mask was as red as she ever imagined and tiny whimpers that crept from his throat thrilled her. Her kitty had it bad but... Then again, so did she. She turned so she could lean against him, tucking underneath his arm with a little sigh, and took another sip of the hot chocolate that was rapidly cooling. He was much warmer than any coat or blanket. Well, my presentation went well. Once I got going, I don't even think I was nervous. Turns out this contest, though, has some unusual requirements that they didn't announce beforehand. Like, I have to model my own design for the competition, and I got assigned a first-year student as a sort of an assistant to prove that I can play well with others, I guess. But the setup of the judges was just weird. How so? He asked, bending to rub his cheek against hers. Well, Mr. Buffer was one judge, of course, but... There was a second man there who I never learnt the name of and something about him fell off. So, were there only two judges? Or are you trying to avoid talking about my father? She stiffened. Suddenly the night chill seemed to cut through her coat, making her shiver. Cat wrapped his arms around her as if he knew she needed protection. Adrian? She whispered turning to look at him over her shoulder. Lila is running the contest. She was the third judge. Thank you for listening to chapter 19 of Meeting Under the Stars. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash that like button if you did. Comment down below what you thought of it. A little bit of marriage chat. And what you think is going to happen in chapter 20 that's coming out next week. And subscribe if you haven't already. Just, just press all the buttons. Subscribe, notification and like. Just do it all. And I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.